and David Murphy is in the on deck. Welcome, Ms. Hawkins, to uh, House Education. My name is Andrew Rice Hawkins. I'm the Executive Director of Grant Safe Progress. We're a multi-issue advocacy organization working on issues of immediate state and local concern. For the last 10 years, we've worked on gun violence prevention and followed public safety laws at the state and federal level. We also convened the New Hampshire Gun Violence Prevention Coalition, and I'm here today in support of House Bill 564. I'm going to skip around my testimony a little bit since some of it's been um, covered, so bear with me. Um, I do want to emphasize that while the federal law does establish gun-free schools with qualifications, gaps in state law and recent statement from the AG's office has left school districts and local police departments in murky water about enforcement. Um, this situation, you heard a little bit about this, but it means that school districts, if somebody does bring a firearm into their school, their first response is to call the local police station. Both the school districts and our local law enforcement are being told they have to call an ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau agent, who's a regional physician, who's not going to be able to help respond. Our responsibility for our school administrators and our local police departments is to protect our community and our students. They need to be able to have the tools to be able to do that. Data shows that um, federal and state laws ensuring schools are gun-free has helped make K-12 schools even safer, significantly reducing gun violence in those places. The claim that gun-free schools invite mass shootings has been thoroughly debunked, and I'll be sending you an email with some of the citations for this data. But the overwhelming majority, nearly 90% of all high fatality gun massacres since 1996, have occurred wholly or partly in locations where civilian guns were allowed or there's armed security or law enforcement present. The FBI data about active shooter cases shows that unarmed school staff have stopped more active shooters than civilians armed with a gun. The idea that armed teachers is an answer or a solution is incredibly naive. I'm just going to ask you to think about the pure logistics of it. If the firearm's locked in the desk and their responsibility to the <coughs> students to safety, how do they easily access it? If it's not securely stored, how do we make sure our students aren't accessing it? The Supreme Court has upheld that we can have exclusion of firearms in sensitive areas like schools. But we do have a rising problem on our hands. As more people become aware of how loose the laws are in New Hampshire, we're going to see more people attempting to get <coughs> firearms into our schools. In fact, just last year, um, a gun group hosted free seminars for teachers, school administrators, and others encouraging them to bring firearms into our schools. This would mean that we'd have school, um, firearms in our classrooms, elementary school recitals, high school football games, you name it. We need to take responsibility and pass statewide legislation to ensure that we're protecting our schools and giving them the tools that they need to help stop a dangerous situation before it becomes a deadly one. I have with me packets of testimony from um, additional gun violence prevention groups, survivors of gun violence, teachers, and school boards. So I'll, since they're packets for each of you, I will just leave the box here if you want to pick them up after rather than try to pass them around. Um, and you will be receiving a petition from students who are obviously <coughs> in the school day right now. Um, but we've been working with a statewide student network, and this is their top priority for legislation this year. And they would really encourage you to pass this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions of Ms. Rice-Hawkins? Did you have written testimony? I did. Thank you very much. Uh, 